classmates and also educators shot to then having to climb over and walk past bodies of victims in the hallway and just piles of blood. These students here at this school have just been through a traumatic and violent day today. I can tell you that in the past hour when law enforcement was giving an update on everything that happened, Governor Brian Kemp, what, Kemp was here. He says that this community is going to get any and all resources needed during this time. When someone preys on kids, it's tragic. Like I said earlier, hate is not going to prevail in our county and hate's not going to prevail in our state. And pure evil did what happened today. That's all I can tell you. Uh, I want to continue to say that. This hits home for us. Uh, being from Athens, just down the road, Marty and I having a daughter that taught first grade just a few years ago. Uh, this is everybody's worst nightmare. New details from investigators include confirmation that there's no evidence of additional shooters nor any type of list of schools that have been targeted. This active shooter call came in this morning at around 1020 and we're told that law enforcement got here in minutes and that a school resource officer engaged the suspect, 14 year old Colt Gray, whom surrendered and was taken into custody. But not before four people were killed and nine were injured in the shooting. Multiple students told us how the shooting was focused on the J Hall uh, location, which is where a lot of the ninth graders are. The GBI did identify the victims as Richard Aspinwall and Christina Irami. They are both math teachers and also students Mason Schermer Horn and Christian Angulo. Those are both 14 year old boys. We did receive these photos from Mason's family that show him at his birthday, uh, you know, blowing out the candles and the cake right there and also in another one with a loved one. He is making some funny faces in that photo as well. We also spoke with a friend of one of the other victims, Christian. We are told that he met his longtime pal in middle school. I was just like, what's going on? And then I, I checked the family group chat and then there's my sister saying that there's a shooting at Appalachia. And that's how I just was like, this isn't real. This can't be happening. And so I started like, I started asking other people if it was true that he had passed away because I just wanted to know. I, I was in denial, you know, because you would never believe that somebody that you knew would pass away just like that. One sophomore told me that she was in the hallway when the shooting started and her math teacher went and opened the door to see what all the commotion was about. And that's when he was shot. She says he is a beloved educator. It was scary because I, I don't know, like so much emotions were going on and I, I was shaking for a while. I, was, I don't know, I was scared. Um, you said this was your math teacher. Yeah. Being someone that you know and that you go to class with every day, what is going on right now mentally, emotionally? It, I, it's, I don't know. It's because I feel sad and I, I don't It's because he was a favorite. He was so chill. Law enforcement says that all of the nine victims who were injured during the shooting and taken to area hospitals, that everyone is going to survive. We're also told that the suspect, Gray, is currently being held at the Barrow County Jail. What's going on, Champagne Gang? So today we're diving into a heartbreaking story, another mass shooting. And I'm not understanding how this keeps happening with kids. How are these kids getting a hold to these guns? So on 9-4-2024, a mass shooting happened at Appalachie High School in Winder, Georgia. And I need you to grab your glasses and scoot up because we need to unpack this tragedy and this is going to be a tough one. Now let's start with the facts. So here's what we know. On Wednesday morning, four lives were senselessly taken, including two students, two teachers. The victims were identified as 14-year-old Mason Shermerhorn and Christian Angulo and math teachers Richard Aspinwall and Christina Arimi. Nine others suffered non-life-threatening injuries and are expected to survive. But let's pause right there. Two teachers and two students. Why do we keep having these stories and when is it going to affect us enough to do something about it? Or do we not care until it is us in that situation or one of ours? 
That's the question. A math teacher who also coached football. Students who had their entire lives ahead of them. Like, how does a community even begin to heal from this? Time and time again. And what about the families? We send our kids to school to get an education, not to learn how to dodge bullets, not to experience a real life version of Grand Theft Auto unfolding in their own hallways. When are we going to care enough? When is the government going to care enough to do something about this? If guns are the problem, get rid of the damn guns. Here. So who is the suspected shooter? According to reports, the suspected gunman allegedly is Colt Gray. And he is only 14 years old. Let that sink in for a minute. He's the same age as the students he unalived. And now he's going to be tried as an adult. What leads a 14 year old to this level of violence? Maybe that's what we should be studying. But it doesn't stop there. No. The FBI has already received tips about Colt on last year. Anonymous tips about threats to commit a school shooting. And when he was questioned back then, nothing came to it. No arrest. No further action. Apparently, they didn't have enough probable cause. How? How does that happen? It's like we can find probable cause to search a car if it smells anything like weed. But threats to shoot up a school goes unchallenged. Shouldn't these threats have been taken more seriously? Especially after seeing Colt's father had hunting guns in the home. Especially after numerous other school shootings. Even if they claimed he didn't have access, how certain can you really be considering that this happened? Why keep firearms in a home that are used for hunting? These aren't for protection. Why not have a room with a retina scan? Fingerprint reader. I don't know. Face recognition where your guns are located. Why? Something. Something to keep these deadly weapons out of the hands of the immature. These kids won't even wash their own ass and change clothes without being told so. So why would you trust leaving weapons around them? Easily accessible. The safety was on. So what? There are videos on YouTube that teaches them how to get around that. And since we're on weapons, let's talk about the weapon used. An AR-15 style rifle. Uh -huh. I don't know about y'all, but why are these types of guns so accessible? Why would a 14 year old have any connection to a weapon that lethal? AR-15s are designed for maximum damage. And here we are again asking the same damn question. Why are these weapons still out here? Why are these weapons in homes? And why are these weapons in homes with minors? Why? Why would you want these weapons in your home where you have minors at? It's my second amendment right. So the hell what? All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful, but all things do not edify. That's Bible, the same one you preach. It may be lawful for you to have a gun in your home, but how does it edify when your children have access to it to harm themselves or someone else? How is it expedient, helpful, beneficial? When time and time again, we see this happening, there will be no access to do this if they were not in the home. When do we stop and think Think about whether we should do it as opposed to we can do it. Huh? Let's look at the timeline of events because the timeline of the shooting sends chills down my spine. So Colt left his algebra class around 9.45 a.m. and when he came back he had a gun. A student noticed it and didn't open the door. Quick thinking probably saved more lives but Colt just moved to the next classroom and opened fire. Can y'all even imagine the fear of these children? You go to the door and see a kid standing with an AR-15 in his hand at your classroom door. These schools need security rooms with security officers monitoring the floor, the outside, the doors at the bathroom. Not in, but you're able to see if someone goes in with a bag and comes out with a gun. The hallway, the area surrounding the school. But I forgot, we don't care enough about education to ensure sure our children are safe when they are in school. That's not what we pour our money in. In fact, it's the area where money is constantly being pulled from to fund something else. Let's talk about it. You know, 
like campaign. We can raise over $380 million for Kamala to run for president, but schools have outdated books and resources, underpaid teachers, and little to no security. Make it make sense. The first calls to the sheriff's office came in around 10.20 a.m., and within minutes, law enforcement was on the scene. Why was there a 35-minute gap before the police were notified? Why? Because no one saw it? Because we're training staff to be reactive instead of proactive? Because they're trained to deal with a threat but not prevent one? Because there's no system set up to monitor activity in the school and around it? Do y'all remember school A when you couldn't even be in the halls unsupervised? You needed a hall monitor, a hall pass. To walk you to the bathroom and back to class. But I guess that was doing too much. Uh -huh. The bravery of the school resource officer is something that I want to highlight. Because they confronted Colt and he surrendered without a fight. But here's the question. What made him surrender so easily? That's my question. Then there are the red flags. Appalachian High School received a phone threat earlier that morning warning that there will be shootings at five schools, with Appalachian being the first. But so far, there was no evidence of other schools being targeted. And whether or not there was evidence, schools should have been canceled until they knew for sure, until the threats were investigated and deemed false. But my question is, who's validating or invalidating these threats? The police? Are they trained in identifying what a viable threat is? Or is it just guesswork? Or do we have agencies specifically trained to pay attention to and investigate threats that are made? These are conversations that we should be having. Put the money where it's needed instead of where it's wanted. And the bigger question is, was Colt acting alone? Or did he have any associates involved in this plan? With several school threats, was he going to start at this school and once he was finished, move on to the other? Does he have a car? Because I want to know if he was the one making the threats to them all, what was the plan? Or were there others at these other schools waiting to see what happened at this school before carrying out their plan at the other? And why? Why, pray tell, wasn't the school evacuated or placed under high alert after the threat? Complete shutdown. Schools in the district were locked down after the shooting, but shouldn't more have been done when the phone threat came in? This is my concern. A threat is a threat. If 9-11 had been taken more seriously, countless amount of individuals wouldn't have lost their lives and countless more wouldn't still be living with the trauma of it. Uh -huh. So, the FBI was on scene after the shooting. And here's where things get even more frustrating. Because remember we discussed this wasn't their first time confronting Colt. Last year, Colt made online threats on a gaming site, even posting pictures of guns. The FBI tracked the threats to Georgia and Colt was questioned. His father admitted there were hunting guns in the home, but Colt didn't have access to them. According to the law, there's no minimum age for possessing a long barrel shotgun or rifle. A minor cannot purchase until 18, but they can possess one. And this is a problem. I understand parents wanting to bond with their children. I get it. They teach them how to shoot. I get it. How to hunt. But how many parents are taking out the time with their children to understand if they should? If little Timmy is already targeting animals to harm them, if little Johnny is already morbid and exuding dark energy, why would you give little Sam training and the tool to release that dark energy? Or are we just blowing it off? As you know, kids will be kids. Are we paying attention to the behaviors of our children to know when our children are in trouble or could potentially be trouble? So my question to the investigators is, how does an investigation that involved actual photos of guns result in no charges? What more did they need to take preventive action? It's like all the signs were pointing to a possible tragedy, yet here we are. So what's next? Investigators are now looking into possible associates Colt might have had. But as of now, they don't believe anyone else was involved. Schools in the district are closed for the rest of the week as this investigation continues. Again, reactive instead of proactive. 
because this should have been done when the threat was received. If you call me and say you're going to shoot up my house, I'm not waiting to see if a car pulls up before taking action. I'm calling the police and getting them involved because a threat has the potential to become a reality. But as we're piecing all of this together, there are still so many questions left unanswered. And I want y'all to drop in the chat and tell me what you think. Number one, could this have been prevented if law enforcement had taken action earlier? Number two, why are AR-15 style weapons still so easily accessible? Number three, should the school have done more after receiving that phone threat? Number four, how can we as a society come together to make sure something like this never happens again? Number five, what responsibility do gun owners with minors in the home have in these situations? Number six, what should the governments do to ensure that all schools have efficient monitoring and security systems set up? to monitor the schools and ensure our children's safety. And here are my closing thoughts. My heart goes out to the families and the community of Appalachia High School. This is a tragedy that will leave scars for years to come. But we need to keep asking these tough questions. It's the only way we can push for real change. The only way to see a difference. Parents, you need to pay closer attention to your children. How do they communicate? Are there any behavioral concerns? Are there any dark, morbid desires that they have expressed or attempted to carry out? How do they behave? with others, their sibling, with you, other family members, friends, classmates. Are they constantly trying to hurt others? Do they talk about hurting others or unaliving others? How are they with animals? Are they withdrawn? And if they are, do you sit down with them to find out why? How much attention are we paying to our children? Personally, I feel like we need to just get rid of the damn gun, period. Make them illegal. No one can have them except law enforcement, and they have to have extensive training conducted by the damn FBI, DEA, somebody on how to de-escalate emotional control and balance, strict use of force guidelines, and they must be retested annually to qualify. You can't have deadly force without a deadly weapon. And if we can't have that, the ability to own a gun should be stricter. Half of these companies doing CCW certifications are just giving these people the answers to pass the test. Fact. No psychological eval. No questionnaire. Nothing. Just no record. Here you go. Kids should not possess, purchase, or handle guns under the age of 21. They're not mature enough. And hell, at 21, you're still not mature enough. You can't buy liquor or cigarettes, but you can purchase a gun. Make it make sense. Something needs to be done and be done immediately because our kids are out of control. They're in danger. Why are our children leaning towards violence to solve all of their problems? I don't know. Maybe because that's what they see the adults doing. Maybe because that's what's brought cast to them on TV, maybe, all of the networks, nothing but Fight Club and Violent Central. Their favorite game, violent, death, gore, blood, abuse, grape, theft, shooting. Something need to change. Your kid can't even pass their classes. They can't read, can't effectively write, but we're teaching them to shoot guns? Come on now. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this. What are your thoughts? Do you think this could have been avoided? And what should we be demanding from our leaders to ensure our schools are safe? Let me know in the comments because this is a conversation we all need to be a part of. Thank you for joining me in another Fizz Feed Conversation. And until next time, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Stay strong, stay safe, and pay attention to your children. Their lives could depend on it. All right, uh, good evening. Uh, as you can tell, we know that it's been a long day. I want to thank you for being patient with us today. I want to thank you for uh, understanding that this is still an active crime scene but from the minute that this tragic incident happened today uh, Governor Kemp has been with me and been talking to me and several times and has been on our side and law enforcement side and I wanted to introduce him to make a few statements uh, again thank you for your patience and at this time I'm going to introduce the governor and then uh, Director Hosey will, will uh, take answers and questions after that. Well, thank you, Sheriff. I uh, just want to thank you and your team for the incredible work that they've done. The response of our first responders today 
has been unreal. Uh, Superintendent LaDuff, Principal uh, Leroy, who just did an incredible job with these kids. Uh, this hits home for us. Uh, being from Athens, just down the road, Marty and I having a daughter that taught first grade just a few years ago. Uh, this is everybody's worst nightmare. And I just want to offer my sincere condolences and our thoughts and prayers to the families of, that have lost loved ones, for those that are injuring and con injured and continuing to fight uh, through just a, a tragic time for really this whole community that's been affected by today's actions. And I just uh, cannot thank the first responders enough. I cannot thank Director Hosey, um, Colonel Hitchens, Director Stallings at GEMA, the whole state response. I want to thank uh, Special Agent Farley and her team from the FBI, FBI that are embedded with us uh, in the school as we speak, running down every single lead and other things that Director Hosey will uh, mention tonight. Um, you know, I represented Bear County when I was in the state Senate 20 years ago. These are our neighbors. These are our friends. And this community is hurting today. And I would just ask all Georgians and all Americans to continue, continue to keep these families, these educators, and these students in your thoughts and prayers. And we will provide every state resource that is needed from here until they're not uh, to support this community and support this team behind me. And with that, I'll turn it over to Director Hosey. Thank you, Governor. Real quick, we wanted to provide some additional updates uh, from today's events. And, and I will mention too that this will be our last update for the evening. So I please hope you'll understand that. Uh, let me start by saying that there's no evidence to report that any additional shooter was involved in this incident today. Uh, investigators are actively pursuing, however, any leads of any potential associates of the shooter that was involved in this incident. So I say that to say we're following up any potential leads through the investigation to ensure if there are any associates involved in this that we, tr we find them, we identify them. Uh, so that's part of, again, the ongoing investigation. Uh, there is no evidence of, of a list of schools being targeted. However, there is a lot of evidence that is being recovered and evaluated. We're going through everything to determine if there is any active threats to any schools in this area, this county, and the state of Georgia. And we will continue to monitor that uh, throughout this investigation, throughout the evening as we, as we carry on. There was a, a call, uh, as we're aware of, to a local high school as well this morning with a reported threat. Uh, police responded and investigated and determined that there was no uh, threat after all. Uh, there's been reports that a Colton Gray, who is another student here at the school, was involved, or a Colton, a Colton Gray was uh, involved in this. If you recall from a previous press conference earlier this afternoon, the individual that we have arrested and will be charged with this, his name is Colt Gray, uh, but there is another student here at the school with a very similar name. We want to ensure everyone that Colton Gray is not involved in this incident. That is the name that I provided you earlier this afternoon. So those reports were inaccurate uh, if that, if that was, was passed on to you. I do, however, want to identify the victims of this, of this incident today, those that lost their life in this tragic event. Mason Shermerhorn, age 14, who is a student here at the school. Christian Angelo, who was 14, also a student here at the school. Richard Aspinwall, not uh, sure of his age, but he was a teacher here at the school. And Christina uh, uh, Irmer, Irm, Irmery, I'm sorry for my pronunciation, who was also a teacher here at the school. We will post a list of these victims uh, for the correct spellings for everyone uh, later this evening after we complete uh, the press conference here. Also, as has been released, the FBI's National uh, Threat Operations Center has received anonymous tips in the past of online threats to commit school violence or school shootings at an undetermined location in time. 
The FBI referred this information to the Jackson County Sheriff's Office for action. Uh, the Jackson County Sheriff's Office identified and located Gray, who is our suspect in this case. They conducted an investigation at that time and there was no probable cause for arrest or to take any additional law enforcement action. Uh, this is not recent, this is in the past, but we wanted to bring that to your attention. Uh, because we are pursuing that, uh, working with the FBI on that, and any connection to that, that incident that could be connected to today's incident as well. Also, we're also aware of uh, some previous contacts that the Department of Family and Children's Services in the area had had with the suspect in his family and we are pursuing uh, that avenue as well too to see if that has any connection with today's incident. Let me stress again, as we have many times, that this is still a very fluid investigation. It is still very active. Uh, we will have agents and there will be law enforcement personnel that will be pursuing investigative leads and collecting evidence throughout the night and into much of tomorrow, I would anticipate as well. We again ask for your patience in that. This is a criminal investigation uh, and we're gonna treat it like that. Uh, so I apologize ahead of time if we don't answer some of the, uh, the questions that you may ask, so please understand. I also wanna, wanna bring note to one very special thing that we do not need to forget about here is we have heroes in our midst. We've talked about our law enforcement personnel, our fire, our EMS, uh, those that are deceased are heroes in my book. Those that are in the hospital recovering right now are heroes in my book, but also the heroes that we need to remember is our faculty and staff here at this school. They acted admirably. They were heroes in the actions that they took. The protocols at this school and this system activated today, prevented this from being a much larger tragedy than what we had here today. So I wanna recognize them uh, as heroes because they are and continue with our thoughts and prayers as has been mentioned for the families that were lost here today, those that were lost here today, those that are recovering in the hospital, and obviously those that were affected directly by this tragedy here at the school and all of the community of Barrow County. Uh, we need to continue to have them in our thoughts and prayers. He will be booked tonight. I'm not sure of the court appearance, but it will be within a reasonable amount of time. Is there anything that you can share the weapon that was used by chance? The weapon that was used in this was an AR platform style weapon. So how did Mr. Gray get the gun into this? We're still investigating that aspect of it. Did he go out of the classroom, get the gun, and come back? We've heard some of that from some students. We're still trying to clarify a lot of the timeline in, uh, from the time that he got here to school today until the incident took and place. And last one from me. I mean, so often, I know people at home, we always hear something that the FBI has heard something about someone who goes and does one of these tragic events. How can we stop this from happening? Because it feels like this happens every single time there's a school shooting that we've heard that there was a prior threat or there's prior knowledge. What, when lives are at stake, how can we stop this from happening? Well, there's a variety of ways, in, in my personal opinion, community involvement, what our school system is doing here uh, to ensure that. Uh, whether we'll be able to stop it completely one day or not, I don't know. That's, that, those are decisions that each individual is making on their own to do this. Uh, but again, I go back to what I said earlier about the heroes here that prevented things from being a lot worse today. But we've got to take action within our own communities, take care of each other, uh, be aware of our surroundings and what's going on in our community. Do you believe they found hunting rifles in the family home? Was it the AR platform weapon amongst the items that they found in the home during that interview? Again, that's part of a lot of the things that we're trying to clarify within the investigation. Again, we're very, very early. As a parent, situation, was it from a 911 call from a faculty or staff member or from a student? Can you just expand on that sure since they got here sure. within minutes? Could you also expand on why it was a female faculty member walking around looking for this student minutes before he shot up the school? No. Can, can y'all clarify answer that? that? Answer I'll let Director Hosey answer that question. The resource officer didn't approach look, him. Look. Ma'am, let, let's get this question right here and then we'll come you back You asked to you. how well, were they notified? Yeah, I, we, we discussed today, heard earlier, law enforcement here within several minutes. So we're just curious 
uh, how the notification went through. Did 911 hear about it from a student, or was it a faculty that made that call uh, alerting law enforcement? All of our teachers are armed with a uh, form of an ID called Centegix. And Centegix alarms us and alerts the law enforcement office after buttons are pressed on an ID and it alerts us to, that there is an active situation at the school for whatever reason and that was pressed and we've had that about a week now. And we've heard stories of students actually pulling other students while they were in the hallway while all this chaos is happening while shooting is going on. We've heard um, stories about students pulling their classmates into the classrooms to get them to secure, to get them to safety. What do you think that says about these these young folks who are you know very 13, 14, 15 years old that they're looking out for one another like that? It's admirable. It's like Director Hosey said, we have heroes among us, and those students and teachers that did that today saved a lot of lives. This could have been way worse than what we, and again, the investigation is still trying to file through those, that information, but those kids are, are heroes and brave as well to do that when they hear an active shooter around them. Sure, well, talked about let, the let, me, let me get this one question right here. Did you have something else, man? No, it was me. Okay. I was asking why did the school resource officer not go looking for this kid and approach him and why they sent a female faculty member to the room, to the algebra room he was in with my daughter, looking for him instead of the school resource officer or why the school allowed this boy to come and go from the class all the time. He would go and sign up for the, the restroom pass. I leave the class and come back sometimes and sometimes never come back. He with, has been wandering this school. For with, with all due respect, ma'am, I think your information is incorrect and our investigation is going to lead to what we have and we will be glad to answer your questions once that's done. I guess victims are lying to me then. Possibly. So what can you tell us about the SRO? You talked about a lot of heroes. You talked about how one of the SROs encountered the shooter. What can you tell us about them, who they are, how long they've been working here and what they did today. Both of the SROs that are here at, at these high schools, at all of my high schools, I have two there. Both of the SROs, to include a third one, was here today, not for any other reason other than to help and assist today. Uh, they're the true heroes as well. They were actively looking. They had an alert, I guess, if you will. And when they interjected or when this shooting began, they interacted with the shooter, Mr. Gray, and as soon as they made contact with him, he gave up immediately. Can you share these officers' names? I, not at this time. I'd rather not. Sure. Well, where is the shooter right now? You said in custody. The shooter is in custody at the Bear County Detention Center because he is a juvenile. He's being booked in, and he will be transported to RYDC. Were officials or school administrators tipped off by a threat here before the shooting happened? I'm not aware of that at this time. Sheriff or Director, can you say the condition on those injured that were taken to the hospital? Have you got any updates on how they're doing? All of our victims that are at the hospital uh, are, are going to make it and going to recover well, as we've been told, and we don't expect any more fatalities at this time. Last question. Uh, has there been any shooting or tragedy to this scale inside a Georgia school that you're aware of? Can you speak to that? I, I can't speak to that, no. Can you put this in perspective for us then? What, what today has meant for law enforcement, for students, all of those affected? Tragic. When someone preys on kids, it's tragic. Like I said earlier, hate is not going to prevail in our county and hate's not going to prevail in our state. And pure evil did what happened today. That's all I can tell you. I want to continue to say that. I'm proud of the men and women behind me. I'm proud of the women that stood beside me. I'm proud of the men and women who protected these kids. I'm proud of this staff. I'm proud of this community. And I just ask for prayers. Governor, Thank you. Is there any more your office can do to prevent shooting like this? Well, look, we've done a tremendous amount on school safety, but today is not the day uh, for politics or policy. Today is the day for an investigation uh, to mourn uh, these precious Georgians that we have lost, to thank the first responders that went, you know, into the line of fire, the school staff, superintendent, the principal, and others that are just trying to hold this community together. That's what we need to be focused on right now. 
Uh, we also had a tragic loss of a firefighter in Greene County earlier today before this event happened with an explosion that killed the life of a first responder that again was running in uh, to danger when many people were trying to run out. And that's what the focus needs to be on tonight. I would ask everybody to continue to keep this community, these victims, uh, and these educators, and these men and women in law enforcement in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. I just want to thank everyone for their patience and taking the time to cover this. Um, we ask that you um, continue to follow the GBI for updates. As we said earlier, we're going to continue to provide updates. It's very important that we get this information out. But right now, we really want to focus on our victims. And you can, as I said earlier, continue to follow us um, as we provide additional updates. Thank can you. Can you the spellings of those victims' names? Yes, I will. Hey. Thank would you. you post cities of residence for the adults? Um, okay, I'm going to get that. I have to look up. The East Peak Conversations.